Welcome everyone for this evening's study. Starting a five-part series, since we're not able to meet for Wednesday night Bible study, I'd like to do a series on the gospel. It's called Mission Impossible. And it talks about the beginnings of God's mission to bring salvation to the nations. I'm not going to start with the New Testament, where most people think of Gospels. You think of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts of the Apostles, the letters of Paul. I'm going to start at the beginning in the book of Genesis. God created Adam and Eve to be very unique. They were like God. They were made in his likeness in the fact that they had free will. They had the free will to either follow God, live in the garden, show that his will for mankind was perfect. But they were also given the right of choice. They were not robots. They were human. And unfortunately, as we know from the history of the book of Genesis and even affecting our lives today, Adam and Eve made the wrong choice. But in the beginning... We have to stop and think, where did this bad influence come from? What was the whole principle behind them being led into making the wrong choice? Well, we know the story. This certain child of God came creeping through the garden, and he saw Adam and Eve, and he basically told them, you know, God has told you you have free choice. But then here he's told you, here's something you can't do. You can't eat from this particular tree. Why not? What is God afraid of? Is he afraid you'll become as powerful as he is, as knowledgeable, have ultimate knowledge? So sin began to creep in. Adam and Eve, as we know, sinned by disobeying God. They were thrown out of the Garden of Eden and had to live by their own sweat, and survive in a hostile land. Yet God had not stopped his purpose of making mankind more like him in perfection. So he began a salvage operation. We know that many times if you're watching a TV show and you come in on the middle of it, there'll be a little brief uh, replay of what happened up to that point so you don't lose the plot of what the show is about. Well, back in Genesis, we can follow that plot. We can learn what it was. God created a godly person. We didn't actually create. He did through the birth of their son, Abel. Abel was a godly person. Yet what happened? His brother Cain murdered him. So that was the loss of that godly person that God had set forth to be a possible lineage for good in the world. So sin continued now, the spread. Takes us down to another godly person that we know as time continued on through Genesis. And that was Noah. See, God looked down at the world and he saw all the sin and all bad things that were going on and he actually felt sorry that he had created man. Yet he didn't destroy mankind at that time and start over. Nope, he found one person. One person among all the people on earth at that time. And that was Noah. And he gave Noah a directive, did he not? And what was Noah's directive? We know the answer to that. To build an ark. Why build an ark? What do you need an ark for? Because God was going to fulfill his purpose. All the evil in mankind was going to be destroyed. Yet here was this one godly person and his family that would continue after the flood. Noah and his family began, and of course through time, mankind was brought back to earth again through Noah's family. And yet, what happened? What did they do? Did they follow Noah and being a godly person, or did they follow their inborn sin that they had gotten through Adam and Eve? Well, we know what happened. First thing you know here, they started gathering in cities. 
And then one group said, tell you what, let's build a tower. Let's build this tower to heaven so that we can know God, that we can become as God. How did they manage that? We know the story. What well, about their language? Everyone spoke the same language. God said, hmm, how am I going to put an end to this? First, we'll destroy the tower. We, we won't let that continue. We'll show them that they're not as powerful. So he destroyed the tower. The next thing we know he did, and we get the word babble from it, is he confused their languages. So they had to spread. Each group that spoke the same language went to a different part of the world. They didn't stay together, and that failed. God continued on. And then in the future, and that's where basically most of this lesson tonight comes from, is Genesis chapter 12. Now, we all know what individual that chapter mostly concerns. He singled out Abraham. Here was another godly man. But he gave Abraham a promise. Actually, there was three promises. Number one, through his children and his children's children, he would create a godly nation, Israel. And through it, he would advance and expand his kingdom on earth. Second, he would make Abraham's name great. Abraham was remembered even... Religions that are not Jewish understand Abraham as the father of many nations. Even the Muslims claim Abraham as the father of their nation through Ishmael. And that he would spread this knowledge and this power, not just into Israel. Israel was not created as an end in itself. It was not just to be a nation of God. Israel's purpose was to spread God throughout all the nations. If you look at a map of Israel, you will see that it's really at that time in the world in the center between Eurasia and Africa. It was the main route. It was the interstate between those two nations, those two areas of the world. They were basically on top of the world, you might say. They were at a point where they could spread God to all the nations. They were to demonstrate the glory of living under God to the nations. Yet, sometimes we know what Israel did. They begin to think of themselves as God's people and as God's people. We are the ones that will bring salvation. They ignored the very fact that they were not created as an end in itself, as a nation that would be strictly God's people, but to carry God to the nations. I have some questions I'd like to have you think about. First off, let's start by, uh, I'm going to let you read Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. We're talking about the project here of building the Tower of Babel. What made that possible? What made it possible for them to gather together in great numbers to build this tower to equal God or to surpass God? I you to think about that and look at it in sort of an orientation to today's world. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to look it up. Isaiah 12.4 Psalm 66, 1 through 4, and Romans 1, 5. Think about the outcome if they had been successful in building this tower to equal God. Think about what would have happened if their languages had continued as one nation and one people. What would that mean for people on the earth in general? Do we see evil working in a similar manner today? Think about that. What do we learn about Satan's tactics and how he uses his strategies 
and his objectives, not only for this point in time, but in our day also. What are his strategies? Did God do this judgment in anger? Was it out of mercy? Was it justice? Or some combination? Through the first ten chapters of Genesis, skim through these, and look at the major offensives and counteroffensives between God and Satan and the evil that had already taken place before this evil came into the world. Look at the three promises in chapter 12 that God made to Abraham. Think about those. From your knowledge you already have of God's word, how did these promises come about, or did they ever come about? Reading these chapters and looking at history, I'd like you to look up and, and form your own answer. What you think about did these promises, or have they yet been fulfilled? If these promises are fulfilled, how will it affect his plan? A redemption for all mankind on earth. Abraham left his home believing that God would fulfill his promises. Why is his faith so important to us today in the world in which we live? Why is it important in the fact that we're having to do this instead of meeting as a group in God's house? See, Satan can't stop us. Technology, some people don't like it, some people love it, yet it's through this technology that we can still build our faith from God's Word. How does the location of Israel shed light? I talked about that. Look at a map. Get your atlas out or go online and look at a map, a world map of Israel and where it's located. And I want you to think in your own words how he planned to use Israel for salvation. Now one, way, one thing we do know is that Jesus Christ, our Savior and our salvation, came from the nation of Israel. But he didn't come to earth proclaiming to save the nation of Israel. He came to bring salvation for all the nations just as the original plan for Israel. These are some things I'd like you to think about because next week we're going to carry on a little bit farther showing God's plan of salvation. If you'd like to read, a, read ahead and get an idea, we're going to be in the book of Jonah. We're going to talk about Jonah and how he fit in with God's plan of salvation. In this series, I said, is a five-part series. And we'll carry down to the New Testament and how Jesus worked to fulfill his plan of salvation. Dear God, we thank you that we have your word. Not just the New Testament, not just the Old Testament, but your word. Every chapter, every page, every book has to be taken to show your plan for salvation with no separation between them. In Jesus' name we pray.